Today we're going to import a green screen video file into a Unity project to create a mixed reality virtual production. This is very similar to the process that is being used by big budget movies, TV shows, to basically add actors to imaginary places or places that would just simply be impractical or too expensive to film. But before we get started, you need to pay the class fee of one like or subscribe to my channel. Class is in session. For the last several weeks, I've been showing my classes how to use a green screen to insert actors into virtual productions, just like in the real movies. Today, we're going to use existing green screen footage that I recorded earlier this week. We're going to place it in an environment created in Unity that I just purchased. So where did I get the environment? Well, I'm continuously telling my students, do not recreate the wheel, meaning that you don't always have time to create everything from scratch especially the 3D models and textures for virtual production environment. I'm modeling that behavior today with a new asset that I just purchased from Kitbash 3D. I recorded the green screen video using a Canon EOS uh, R6, I believe, camera and my iPhone. After a little editing, after a lot of editing, after editing the recording into sequences for my short film, I then imported the MP4 files into Unity. I placed a quad into the environment. Now quads are preferred over planes inside of Unity, especially if you're adding photos or movies. Uh, planes are great for walls or flooring or streets or something like that. But if you're going to add an image or a movie to a scene, quads are preferred. On my quad, I'm going to go over here to quad and I'm going to do an add component and we're going to select video player. I typed in VI and it came up with video player. Drag the video sequence that you're going to use into video clip and we're going to change our render mode of the video player to render texture. I've also got my chroma key here. This is a modified chroma key that I found on another website and you can pull that down from GitHub. Again, the link is in the description below. Let's get rid of that green background from my video then. We're going to now create and do a rendered texture in our assets. So rendered texture then drag the new render texture that we just created. You can rename it if you want to. It's going to be used for our chroma keying. And we're going to drag that into the target texture for what how this is being applied. Next, let's create a material. So create material. And again, this is going to be with our used with our chroma key. Um, this time I'm going to go ahead and name it. We'll just name it chroma. And I'm going to go to Shader, Download, Custom, Chroma Keyer. There we go. Next, drag the your render texture into the texture on your Chroma material. Material. Let's go over and drag the material that we just created onto our quad. Go back to our quad here. Now we've got the the material there. And just a little bit of setup and we'll be ready to go. Your border should be set at 1000, which it should default to that if you're using the downloaded chroma key. Here. Uh, we need to go ahead and set what the key color is. Now you can see it goes for a pure green on this, which obviously my green screen is not a pure green. So I'm going to use the eyedropper and try and get a medium color from the background there. That looks good. And then our color feathering will be used at, to make sure that we've, we've got a valid color in this. So let's hit run on this and we can adjust our color feathering. And there we can see the character there. Well, that's pretty close. We, we're, we just need to ju up the, that just a little bit. This is getting real close here. Well, that's too far. I'm losing a little bit. I'm getting some reflectivity off the wall. 4.5 looks pretty good on this. Let's make a few other minor adjustments to this. First of all, we'll go ahead and turn on loop and I'm going to set the aspect ratio on my video player to stretch. Okay, I'm still getting a little green at the bottom, but I can live with that by choosing my camera angles carefully. So you can see we're getting good pass through on this. I can see everything in the background. Before we get too far, we do need to add another package to our Unity toolset. Jump over here to Window, Package Manager, 
we need to add the Cinematic Studio. Once you're in Package Manager, you can, if it's not showing in your project, the Cinematic Studio, you can go to the Unity Registry. It should show up in the Unity Registry. Uh, mine's refreshing right now, so I'm just going to jump back to End Project. If nothing else, search for Cinematic Studio and then install it to your project. This gives us timeline, the sequences, uh, Cinemachine, Recorder, all those valuable tools that are, are necessary to do this next step in our production. And to add our timeline to the system, we need to right click. Let's create an empty object. I'm going to call this Scene 1. And then uh, attach to the Scene 1, we're going to go to Sequencing, Timeline, tell it to create the timeline that needs its own file. It's saving it as scene one because that's what object I had selected. Uh, that'll be saved to my assets folder, which is great. And now we, I like to have my, work with my scene down here. There we go. And now we're ready to get started on creating the animation and getting everybody uh, connected with the cameras. Since we now have the Cinematic Studio as part of it. We also have the virtual cameras. Check out the next video if you're interested in learning how I went about animating and putting the whole scene together for the final product. Today we learned how to do the green screen and get that put onto a quad. So we, we've made great progress today. We'll continue with video number three in this series on the animation process. Make sure you like and subscribe and click on the bell if you want to be notified when the next video is available. Have a great day.